Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another meal prep video. So we are just gonna jump right in. I'm doing my meal prep a little opposite this week because I don't need any of the produce that I'm cutting up this week for my meal prep that I'll be showing you. I'm gonna go ahead and get the meals done first because those need to go into the oven for a while. So figured I would do all this and then while the everything is baking in the oven, then I can work on cutting up my produce and maybe I can do a meal prep under an hour today, <laughs> especially since I'm getting kind of a late start here Sunday. So let's go ahead and show you the first meal, which is going to be some chicken pot pies. These are gonna be individual chicken pot pies. Um, as I've been telling you guys the last few weeks, these next three weeks for work is gonna be extremely busy. This next week I have only two days out of the five days I work that I have work events. So I will not need to have lunch Monday and Tuesday because it will be provided at our work event. We'll go to lunch, whatever. Um, so I don't need lunch for Monday and Tuesday, but I will need lunch for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and also for today because I haven't eaten lunch yet. So I'm gonna make four of these and I'm just gonna have the same lunch every day, especially since it's only three days next week, so don't really need to mix it up too much. Um, so these are gonna be individual chicken pot pies. So go ahead and preheat your oven if you're making this along with me. Preheat it at 350 degrees, and let me show you what you need for this first part of the chicken pot pies. So we need some chicken. Now this is um, cooked, shredded rotisserie chicken that's been frozen. I'm just gonna leave it frozen. I think it'll be okay because we're putting this in the oven. Um, and it's already cooked through, so I just, I didn't take it out, out of the oven, but um, it's really nice to have frozen rotisserie chicken in your oven because then you don't have to worry about it, you don't waste it, so definitely, just so you know, if you ever know if you buy those big chickens at Costco or you cook your own um, shredded chicken, put it in the freezer, it lasts just fine. So that's what I have here. So I have four servings, so it's 12 ounces of, um, of the shredded rotisserie chicken. So you need that. Now the original recipe that I did see online, which was on an Instagram, so I'll have to list the recipe out. It called for 20 ounces of cooked chicken. I just thought that was gonna be too much. I think this will be fine. If I need to add more, then I will. Um, I'm gonna mix it all up and I'll see if I need to add more because I do have some more that I can add in and then I'll just adjust everything. But um, this is already 30 grams of protein with the amount of chicken that I put in the tracker. So I feel like that's enough and we'll just have to see how meaty it looks after I get everything all stirred together. So we have our chicken. So whatever you want, however many ounces you want, um, but this is four servings of shredded chicken breast. Then we need two cups of mixed veggies. So whatever kind of mixed veggies you want. I just like these ones from Kroger because they have carrots, corn, green beans, and peas. I'm not a pea fan, but I don't mind it in mixed veggies. So two cups of mixed veggies. Then you're gonna need a can of cream and chicken. Yes, y'all know, I know this is a controversial thing. I don't mind using it. You guys know I don't use this kind of stuff very often, but I think it's fine to use in moderation. Everything in moderation, y'all. And this is the 98% fat free. So this is only two points for a serving, by the way, if you did not know that. So the 98% fat free is really low points. It's the same as the cream of chicken you can get from Campbell's as healthy request. It's the same amount of points. Um, so they're both, I think, just lower in fat, but this one's even lower in fat than the healthy request one. So you'll need a full can of cream of chicken. Then you need one cup of milk, whatever kind you wanna use. I'm using the fat-free uh, Fairlife. It has extra protein in it, so that's probably where I got my extra protein in mine since I didn't use as much chicken. Um, but yes, I'm using a cup of this. You could also use plain almond milk, I'm sure. I don't see why you couldn't. You could use half and half, like fat-free half and half. You could use heavy cream if you wanna go that way. Whatever you wanna use, just some sort of milk and you need one cup of that. Now the recipe called for minced onion, but I'm gonna use my easy onion. It called for two teaspoons of minced onion. I'm just gonna do a squirt of this in there. I figured it'd be a lot stronger tasting and I like that onion taste. And then we need a teaspoon of a poultry seasoning. So I have that there and then just some salt and pepper. Now this is just for the base and then I'll show you what's, what we're gonna put on top. So let's go ahead and put this base together and then we will get to the topping. Now I'm weighing my bowl ahead of time. Normally I'll just pour it into another bowl and then um, 
weigh out the whole entire dish as you guys know but I don't want to dirty up another bowl so we're just gonna weigh this bowl ahead of time and then when everything goes in there then we'll just we'll know um, how much the bowl is so the bowl is 987 grams so then once everything goes in and we have a total I'm just gonna minus out the bowl total and then we'll just divide the other by four since this is gonna make four servings Okay, we're just gonna start pouring everything in. So I'm gonna start with the chicken. I kind of feel like I maybe should have <laughs> thought that out a little bit, but that's okay. Too early for the um, snowflake things. I don't know where all my, I think all my um, rubber spatulas are in the dishwasher because I have not unloaded it yet. So from the week. So I think that's probably where it's at because we have just Christmas ones, which is okay, right? Okay, so we got that gonna add in this is so easy you guys added a cup of milk I'm gonna go ahead and stir a little bit before I add in the veggies um, just because I want to make sure that we get some of this mixed up okay we're gonna add in our veggies and this is two cups of mixed veggies like I said you can use whatever veggies you want I like lots of veggies in my type of pot pies like this and then we're going to add in our squeeze of onion and I'm just going to do just a little, a little squeeze there. Got mostly onion juice on that, but I don't want to put too much more. And then I have a two teaspoon measuring spoon. So I'm just going to use that since we need two teaspoons of, wait, no, we needed one teaspoon. Oh my goodness. I almost made a huge mistake. Okay. One teaspoon of poultry seasoning probably wouldn't have mattered too much, but and again, I will have this recipe written out below. Salt and pepper. Yep, I use lots of pepper. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this stirred up and we're gonna weigh it and we'll see what we get. Okay, we're all mixed up. And yes, I definitely would say don't use frozen. So it's one of those things where, you know, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so I would definitely say make sure your chicken is not frozen because it was a little bit hard to mix up, but I think we'll be okay. So it's 2065, so we need to subtract our 987 from that, and then we will know how much goes in each of our containers. So we need 269.5 in each of these. These are my oven safe containers. So what's nice about them is they have lids, so they can go right from here into the oven, and yes, you can leave the rubber on there. I have looked it up. These are the yellow ones. I got them from Costco, like, I don't know, five years ago, a long time ago. Um, I know that you can get them on Amazon. I will have them linked down below, but if you can find them at Costco, much cheaper. But it's nice because they can go into the oven, let them cool, then go right into the refrigerator. Don't have to change pans or anything, which is super, super nice. So we need 269.5 in each of these. Oh, I need to spray them with some cooking spray first. I spray them down good with some cooking spray. What's nice about these is that, like I said, they're just, I can just go right to, just grab it right out of there, heat it up, have it for lunch, and this is gonna be so good. I don't know why I'm craving like comfort foods type stuff when it's supposed to be at like 115 tomorrow. So I'm not sure where my mind is at. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these filled up and then I will show you the topping. Okay, so these are all done, ready to go into the oven, but let's go ahead and do our topping. Uh, for our like our pie crust to go on top. So the first ingredient we're gonna need is gonna be two cups of the Kodiak Power Cakes. Um, you're gonna probably want just the buttermilk flavor because they come with lots of flavors, chocolate, cinnamon, birthday cake, you don't want any of those. <laughs> we wanna do the, um, definitely wanna do the plain buttermilk. So we're gonna do two cups of this and then we need one egg. one cup of water and then you need two teaspoons of parsley which we're just going to kind of eyeball it and then some salt and pepper again you could probably season this however you would like but this is this makes it really good and then just go ahead and mix it up until it's all liquid and then we will spoon some on top instead of weighing it out 
I am just going to start with a quarter cup on each of them and then until they run out, which it should probably be about a half a cup. I should have started with a half a cup, but we're just gonna do it this way until I run out. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna kind of spread it on top. Now the video I watched on, it's either TikTok or Instagram, I think it was Instagram, which I don't like with the Instagram reels. You can't pause them. So you have to watch them like 10 times. Why I like TikTok videos better because you can pause them and because she didn't have the recipe written out in the description box and it said go to her website but when I go to her website the recipe takes me back to Instagram so I had to watch it a lot but her like pancake batter came out a lot liquider liquidy so I don't know but I just I've just went and looked at it again and it that's what it says two cups and that's what I put into my tracker so think it'll be fine so this is going to go into a 350 degree oven for one hour so while these are in there we're going to make some Kodiak muffins next so then that way I'll those need only need to cook for about 20 minutes so I'll just watch the time actually I think I will go ahead and set this timer for 40 minutes and then I know when that goes off I have 20 minutes left and I can just put the muffins in there and then they could all be done at the same time so 350 one hour I knew this week I was going to need something grab and go for breakfast because I, like I said Monday and Tuesday work events I'm not super hungry first thing in the morning and we're going to be in the car for the first part of the morning traveling to where we're going and so I figured something I could eat in the car I think I may like have a yogurt first thing in the morning and then eat a couple of these muffins I'm going to make and then that way I'm still getting protein getting some healthy whole grains and carbs and not very many calories and I'll be grab and go and I can just throw them in my bag and eat them whenever so that's why I'm making the muffins you guys know I love my yogurt bowls in the morning but just don't think that's gonna happen don't think I will have time so for these Kodiak muffins the, the original recipe that I saw used chocolate chips I'm using berries because I'm not like a fan of really super sweet in the morning so these are perfect for me so we need two cups of Kodiak cakes. You see I have two boxes here because I am cleaning out my pantry, y'all. Speaking of that, stay tuned. After we get through this really busy work week, I'm thinking the week of the 28th of August, I'm going to start a pantry clean out challenge for myself. And I will definitely be filming that over the time period it takes for me to go through everything. So stay tuned for that. And that way we can get through our pantry. But Kodiak cakes is one thing I have a ton of in my pantry right now. So we need two cups of the Kodiak cakes. We need in here one teaspoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of cinnamon. We need one third cup of plain non-fat Greek yogurt. One cup of milk. Again, I'm using that Fairlife uh, protein fat-free milk. One egg, teaspoon of vanilla extract, and then we will also need some fruit. So this is a cherry berry blend from Walmart. And then also, I don't think I said, two tablespoons of sugar-free syrup. So let's go ahead and set up the camera and we'll throw everything together. Okay, so we have our two cups of Kodiak cake in here. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the, the baking soda and the cinnamon, which we already have measured out. And then we'll add in the yogurt. And this is just a third cup of plain non-fat Greek yogurt. And then, oh, we actually only need two thirds of a cup of milk. So we'll make sure we leave only a third of it in there. There we go. And again, I will have the recipe written out down below. One egg. We have our two tablespoons of syrup our vanilla which I don't ever really measure out so about a teaspoon of vanilla I'm going to stir that up first before we add in our fruit and now we're going to add in the berries so this is about two cups or so one and a half cups of like I said the cherry berry blend I think my favorite Kodiak muffins are the ones using the pumpkin Kodiak mix and then using canned pumpkin which I make those a lot in the fall. Those are really good. So definitely we'll be showing a lot of those come September, October 
time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these stirred up and then I'm gonna grab my muffin pan. My oven's already preheated, so you wanna do 350 degrees, but we're already cooking our chicken pot pies in there. So you wanna take, I like to use these silicone muffin cups. I get these off of Amazon. They're really good, but I still do spray them down because sometimes some things stick, usually just eggs are the only things that stick, but um, just to be safe, I like to still spray them, but it may not be necessary. So I'm just gonna divide these as evenly as I can. So it makes 12 muffins. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll move on to our dip that we're making this week. So here are 12 muffins. So for those of you that may be new and don't know what Kodiak, the Kodiak cakes and why I use it in place of flour is because it has higher protein in it. So since muffins are mostly just carbs in it and your body is gonna burn, burn through it a lot quicker. If you add that extra protein, it's gonna keep you fuller. But I do usually pair these with a yogurt um, that way I'm getting extra protein and just to stay fuller longer. But, um, so that's why I use the Kodiak cakes. Anyway, these are gonna go into a 350 degree oven for 18 minutes. Next up for some veggies for the week. Again, a really easy grab and go item for me. Um, it's gonna be some dips and veggies. So I've showed this recipe before, but with plain non-fat Greek yogurt, we're gonna make it with fat-free cottage cheese this time. So this is going to be essentially zero points, but technically a tablespoon of this onion mix is one point. So you can count as one point, count as zero. I kind of think by the time you mix up the envelope with all of this, it's really going to be probably zero points, but I typically do count a point for it since I do eat quite a bit of it when I eat the, with my veggies. So we're going to use a whole envelope of this. And typically, like I said, when I make this with plain non-fat Greek yogurt, I use one envelope per 32 ounces of the plain non-fat Greek yogurt. This is 30, 24 ounces of cottage cheese. So I'm just gonna kind of play by ear. I'll probably do about three quarters of the envelope, taste it, see how it goes. But we're gonna mix this up in our blender, then just put it right back into this container to use throughout the week. And what's nice about this is we know that it's gonna be good for as long as the cottage cheese is good for, which is September 6th. So this will last me for quite a while. I'll probably have this over the next couple of weeks. And the cottage cheese does have less calories and more protein. So, um, and if you blend it up like this, then you don't have the curds, which is what a lot of people don't like. So you don't have to, to worry about that. I personally, you guys know, I eat a lot of cottage cheese and, the, and that doesn't bother me, but for people that it does bother, then you know that you can blend it up and you can use it all kinds of things. I have not, used it in a lot of the things, but you can use it in sauces and things like that. I've used it in Alfredo sauce and it's really good in Alfredo sauce too. So I think I'm just gonna go with about three quarters of it and then we'll give it a taste. So here everything is in my blender cup. I'm gonna go ahead and blend it up and we'll give it a taste. So I went ahead and put in the rest of the envelope. I did taste it and I felt like it needed more. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this back into my container and then we're gonna cut up some veggies. And here it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. And um, this comes out, like I said, you can do it for one point, whatever. Um, and the calories are very minimal. I mean, you can have like, I think this cottage cheese is, yes, yeah, a half a cup for 80 calories. So unless you use a half a cup of dip at a time, you're not gonna be getting very many calories for this. For veggies this week, we're gonna do some cucumbers and then we're gonna do a red and orange bell peppers. So, and I also have some little baby cucumbers here that I really like. I think we're gonna do the cucumbers this week. I think I'm gonna do them in sticks rather than rounds. Uh, let's see, oh, that's perfect. I just feel like dipping it in that kind of dip, I just think it would be really good. And I've been peeling my, I think I've, I've been saying this, I think on every meal prep, but I've been peeling my English cucumbers lately because this, the skin has been just super bitter and it never used to be with these English cucumbers. And a lot of you said you've noticed the same thing. So I don't know what it is, but so I've been peeling them. I, think I got this one a little bit too thin. I'll go ahead and eat that one. I thought I had some carrots or I would have bought carrots. So we'll just do lots of cucumbers this week. This is another thing that I will just have in my bag when we're traveling for work to the different places we have to go. 
and then that way I always have something you know but if I don't have the diff I can at least just have some sort of veggie but I'm gonna bring my insulated bag and then that way it stays cool and I can take my my dip and everything and I can just eat it in the car because I won't be the one driving so don't have to worry about that and the bell peppers I'm just gonna cut into strips yeah, this is definitely going to be an under one hour meal prep today, which is nice because I still, I think, have five minutes before the timer goes off to put my muffins in to be done at the same time as the pot pies. So worked out really good. And I've been kind of cleaning up as I go along, so I just only have a few dishes to do. So it is possible to do meal prep under an hour and you're still getting a lunch, breakfast, and snacks. So I know meal prep can be very intimidating to people, but it definitely can be done. You can just start small. Like I always say, to start small, start with one type of meal or just do your snacks and your veggies and then you can just move on to more as you get used to doing it or just whatever your time allows for your schedule. I think with the little cucumbers, actually sometimes I just like to keep them whole and I think I may just do that. I think I'm just going to um, I already rinsed them off and everything, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and put them in a Ziploc bag and then I can just take the whole bag with me to have. And here are our veggies for the week for our dip. And I have 17 minutes left before my muffins are done because I just put them in and I actually already did all the dishes and everything. So I actually have time to unload the dishwasher and do some stuff I was going to do after meal prep and I can do it while I'm still on the clock. So. We'll go ahead and go do that. And as soon as the pot pies and the muffins come out, I will show those to you. Okay, so here is how our chicken pot pies came out. And I have to tell you guys, these smell absolutely amazing. Amazing. I cannot wait to have these. They just look so good. So definitely need to let these cool down for quite a bit before I put them in the refrigerator, but they came out perfect. I couldn't have asked for them to come out any better. Exactly an hour in that 350 degree oven and then we have our muffins here i'm going to leave them also in here before i take them out let them cool completely but these came out again 18 minutes exactly at 350 toothpick came out clean and i'll definitely give you a review of these throughout the week in my weekly video that i post on fridays so a complete overview of everything we did today we have our veggies with our dip, which I may or may not have been snacking on all this time. <laughs> it's really good, you guys. Um, and it did thicken up a little bit. So, and if ever your, your cottage cheese dip comes out too thin, you can always add plain non-fat Greek yogurt to it and it'll thicken it up as well. So um, we have our dip, our veggies, and then of course our lunch and our breakfast. Oh, let me tell you the calories and all of that on everything. So our muffins come in at 57 calories for one four grams of protein for one and one point for one. I plan on having two, which does come up to two points and for them, so with the Weight Watcher math, when I put them in there, it was two points. So I plan on having two of these with a yogurt, but so that'll be eight grams of protein right there with just two muffins and 100 and what, 14 calories? Not bad. And then our pot pies come in at, turn my page, four points for each, and that is a good size serving, you guys. So four points for each pot pie, 280 calories, and 30 grams of protein. So again, very, very good macros on that. And that is everything, you guys. So stay tuned for this next week, and you'll see all of my meals come together in my weekly video. Also, check that description box for any links. And actually, I'll just type out these two recipes. I'll just type those out in the description box so you have those because I did change them up quite a bit from the original recipe. So I'll just type all of those out down there and let me know if you plan on trying any of these and what did you meal prep this week. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.